Hey guys, Christy here from DeSilva Life and welcome back to our channel. Okay, so if you missed the past few videos on HoneyBook Smart Files, make sure to check them out on our channel. If you're brand new to Smart Files and you wanna get an overview and get an intro to invoices and contracts, we have those videos already on our channel. So what we're gonna be talking about today is actually taking the invoice and the contract and putting it together in a proposal. They are literally one of my favorite templates to use ever. Okay, so let's dive in to creating a custom HoneyBook proposal. Okay, so in the previous two videos, we created an invoice template, we created a contract template, and now we're going to put them together for a proposal. So if you miss those two videos, it goes through all of the details of invoices and contracts, smart fields, payment details, etc. So I'll quickly glance over them in this video, but if you want the in-depth tutorial, make sure you go check those out. And then the proposal is pretty simple because we just pull them together. So what I'll do in here is I'll show you through this proposal template, and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and create one from scratch just to show you how easy it is once you have these templates mapped out. Okay, so here we have your custom contract. This looks just like the other one. Then we have an invoice page, and then we have a payment page. So when you do add a page, you'll see, actually I'll show you when we do the other one. If you add an invoice, it automatically adds a payment. So let's go ahead and go back to templates and click create new proposal. Okay, so this is the proposal template. It has company information standard here if you're creating a new proposal, but we're gonna get rid of that. You can choose to keep it here or not. Then invoice, payment, and then a standard thank you page. So I wanna show you a fun thing with the thank you page as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna add a page and I'm gonna pull it from the contract template that we created. So now I have this contract. I'm gonna come here, drag this up, and then delete the other one. So you can see if I click on this page settings here, you can change the name, change the background color if you wanted to, and background color opacity, page background image. So here is where if you wanted to actually change the background color of this block, you could do so, make it a little custom and fun. Um, you can also change the padding on the top and bottom or custom, but so you're gonna see this is the custom contract. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an invoice page. So from our invoice template, I'm going to, okay, so it says you already have an invoice here, so if you want to add this new one, let's you have to remove it. So I'm gonna click delete and then delete. Then I'm going to add the invoice template that we created. And you see when I click invoice, it automatically adds the invoice and the payment. So now you can choose. Do you wanna have also a header on this page or not? Um, typically what I do is I won't have it on the invoice. I'll just have it on the first one. Instead of your custom contract, I'll put your custom proposal. Again, all the branding tips were in the invoice video to start. Um, so if you miss that, go ahead and check that out. And I build this header in there and you can see how I do that. So we have the contract, the invoice, the payment, and thank you. So I just wanna go through, I know we went through this in depth, but just a couple tips in here about proposals. So in here, you can copy and paste your contract and then the most important part of your contract is what we call smart fields. So if you click insert, you can either do a custom smart field. So say you wanted information or let's actually do something specific. Um, let's say birthday. Then you can enter that field and click must fill. And then they'll be able to be prompted to fill in that smart field. But if you want to add any standard information that can be gathered from the project, you're gonna click insert 
click this drop down and then you can pull that information by bringing any of these in. So say you wanted first client full name. Once you add this to the project, it's going to auto fill that field. And then you can say maybe you want them to be able to edit it because you're not sure of the exact spelling. Um, or maybe you don't want them to edit it because legally you want it to be exactly how it is on their portal, etc. So that's a little bit about smart fields. And then two other things. Now that this is a proposal and we have the invoice attached, I love adding the payment recap and service recap over here on the right. So typically what I'll do here is I'll write services or description of services, and then you insert the services recap here. And then you can also do um, payment plan or payment details, whatever you want that to be called on the left and then insert payment recap. So where is this information coming from? This is coming from the invoice. So if you see, if I add another package here, let's put travel fee and add this at 150. Then when I go back to the contract, you're gonna see that it updated in there. So one travel fee, 150. And then the payment plan updated automatically as well. So I totally recommend adding those to the contract section, even though the client will be able to see it in the invoice itself. And then another note here I want to talk about is I recommend if you have standard packages, creating a proposal for each of them. So say you have four different photography packages or four different VA packages. I recommend creating a proposal for each of them so you can easily just go ahead and update update this to a client project or upload it, attach it to a client project, edit anything if needed, but if not, you can just go ahead and send it over so you don't actually have to add packages and fees manually. You have those to easily just reference when needed. So once you build out your standard contract, invoice with the payment settings and service fees and taxes and everything like that, I would suggest going ahead and duplicating that and just switching out the packages. So then when you do click use this template and attach it to a client project, really all you have to do is come in here and adjust the invoice. The contract will be set, payment and thank you will be set if there's nothing that you ever have to manually insert on the contract. So that's just a tip there for you. So we have the invoice. Again, we went through all the payment settings with auto pay, smart amounts, and smart due dates. So that's all in the invoice tutorial. And then let's talk about the thank you page. So this is a really fun way to make it a little bit custom. So some people have branding photos where they're like popping confetti or champagne and it's really fun and they'll be like, thank you so much. We can't wait to work with you. Um, another fun thing to do is that you can also add a GIF here. So sorry, I'm just trying to delete this. I don't know why that was glitching, but if this happens to you, I just drag this down and then I'm going to delete it here. Um, so you could put here, thanks so much for choosing De Silva Life for your photography project. Obviously it's not, but um, this is what the proposal is. Um, we will follow up with next steps in the next 48 business hours. So let's go ahead, bold this, let's make it large, and then let's go ahead and add a GIF. So here I'm gonna add a block, I'm gonna add an image, and you can go to Giphy. Here's a fun tip, so let's go open up Giphy. And on here, I'm going to click celebrate and the office because we love the office. So it's also a fun place to like insert some personality, right? Okay, let's do this one. Let's 
save image as Giphy. Save. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to click on add image, upload, and then drag this into here. And then you'll see it's going to upload into this spot. I can stretch it or not, make it bigger, etc. Change the, so if I go to this block, the content width is 100, so I'll make it um, medium. And then, hold on, there we go. Um, so you can add a fun GIF, you can do a photo, or just have a, um, just have a, nothing, just text or delete the page altogether. Totally up to you. Um, but you can customize it and make it fun. So another thing that I showed in one of the previous videos was the buttons. So here you'll see this button here. You always want to make sure when you're making a new smart file that all the buttons are proper, right? Because if you're pulling in from other templates, it might get funky. Like the contract one says done, where here this wouldn't actually be done. It would be next. So we could put next dash invoice, next payment and not submit, it'd be next, thank you, and then done, or submit. So that's there, and then just one other thing I wanna show you is the company theme. So here, I show this in another video, but here's where you can access the standard things. So what does the button color look like? Um, what are the standard texts? You can always apply the company theme, which is found in the company settings section, and mess around with the formatting here. So now that we went through this proposal, I'm going to name this photography proposal, and we are going to upload this to John Smith. So let's go ahead and click use template, existing project, John Smith, and then create smart file. So now you're going to see there's just two highlighted fields, the project location, because we didn't have that, and then the agreed upon date, which this you can also add a smart field that's just the agreement date. So that would be down here. Let's find it, or maybe it's up here. Contract date. So you could put that one there so then you don't have to do the agreed upon date. And um, this was just like a HoneyBook template. So you wanna make sure, if I just change that in John Smith and this was something that I want to change long-term, make sure you go ahead and change that in the original template as well. So those are the smart fields. These are already set. Is there anything that I have to change in the invoice? Maybe the travel fee is extra because John Smith lives a little farther away or the project is a little farther away. And then payment and thank you. So then you're gonna click share, upload that email template. If you don't have it connected to the proposal, I'll show you how to do that. And then you would click send. So I showed this in one of the other videos. If you want to always have a uh, email template that pulls up with a proposal or a specific package, this is how you would do it. Okay, so I went back into the template and you would click the three dots, edit email settings, and this is where you would select from your templates, create that in the email templates in your template center, and then every time you add this to a project and click share, it's going to bring up that email template and you can always adjust it before sending it out. So it doesn't mean it'd be standard for every single person. You can make it custom. So that is it for the proposal video. Again, if you feel like you need more clarity on contracts and smart fields and invoices, payment schedules, things like that, make sure to check out those two previous videos. I hope that tutorial was helpful for you in learning how to create a proposal, all the different tips and tricks, how to manage payment schedules, insert smart fields in contracts, 
and give your client an elevated and easy client experience. If you want to make sure you don't miss any other HoneyBook tutorials or the rest of this series on HoneyBook Smart Files, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any other HoneyBook questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below and check out our discount code for 50% off your first year in the description. With that, thanks for watching. Uh -huh.